You could say I'm a big fan of stalker and obsession films. In fact, I was thinking about doing a list on 20 stalker obsession films. If you guys want that, please let me know down below. But what has that got to do with the new thriller, Last Moment of Clarity? Well, I went in blind just with the poster and with the tagline, the ones we lose are never really gone. I went into this expecting a romantic, thrilling story about love lost, but instead it morphed into my favorite guilty pleasure, a stalker film. Starring Samara Weaving, Brian Cox and Zach Avery, Last Moment of Clarity follows Sam, a man living in Paris who is distraught by his past relationship with quirky, manic, pixie dream girl Georgia. The relationship ended three years ago with Georgia's traumatic death, but years later Sam sees an actress in a film that he believes to be Georgia. So the hunt begins. But it is not as straightforward as it seems. Avoiding spoilers, the film changes gears a few times involving a European mafia, a detective, and an additional quirky love interest who's interested in him. But when he tells her the story, she decides to help him, obsess over this actress. Yeah, I, I still don't get that one. <laughs> okay, I try not to be too negative on this channel. I'm normally out here preaching recommendations, but when I saw this new thriller with Samara Weaving, I knew you guys would be just as interested as I am. The Australian actress has had a growing popularity in the horror community since her kick-ass performances in The Babysitter, Mayhem, and Ready or Not. In this film, we see her play her usual fun, offbeat, wild love interest, but unfortunately, she's not given enough screen time to show Shine. The film was directed and written by first-time filmmakers and writers Colin and James Creasel. It's said that the film plays homage to Hitchcock's classic thrillers such as Vertigo and Rear Window. The film aims to make a meaningful story about identity, soulmates, love, and beyond all, timing. It's got all of the classic twists and turns in the story, but there's one thing it's missing, and that's character development. The film does not take time to open its characters to the audience, which is a shame because the reveals in this film are well crafted. For me, they're trying to emulate those jaw-dropping moments in gangster films, or what comes to mind for me is those epic moments you just wait for in a Clint Eastwood film. But there is an emotional disconnect for the audience. Without being emotionally involved in the relationship, the payoffs fall flat, which is such a shame because I feel like there was so much love put into the script, it just does not translate onto the screen. As first time directors, I feel like they bit off more that they could chew and they tried to make something so grand, but they didn't make the audience work for it. Movies that have these kind of grand plots and reveals usually stretch out for longer, making the reveals that much more hard hitting because we're invested in the characters. For a run hour of one hour and 30 minutes, minutes, there just isn't enough time to hold on to all of these details while presenting an authentic relationship on screen. The film teased me with the idea of an obsessive stalker story, only to end up to have something much more valuable that was completely rushed through. A good example of this is when Sam goes to a cafe with the character Kat, and Kat says as they're moving to the next scene, let me hear your story. Cut to Sam having told Kat the whole story, and now she's on board. No normal person would take on a story like that. There has to be some trust built between the characters. We need to see some difficulty in sharing that kind of story. It's meant to be heavy. That's how you make things authentic. Saying, let me know your story and rushing straight through is a cheap and quick way of progressing the story and leaving all the emotions out. I felt like throughout the film, there were so many of these examples. There were shortcuts creating a larger line between us and the story, keeping us from being emotionally invested. So between the shortcuts, the rushing of the film, and the fact that we're not emotionally invested, there wasn't much to fall back on. I do really admire this as a first film, but I feel like with the cast backing this film up, I'm kind of disappointed. I'm gonna give this one a five out of 10. I do wanna say that halfway through this film, I felt like it was all lost, but it did kind of pick itself back up or you could at least see what it was meant to be. The idea was there, but the execution was just done so poorly. Scare is one, this was meant to be a thriller. Turned out to be more of a drama, and for originality, I'm gonna give it a four. I uh, hope you guys found this interesting, and hopefully I steered you in the right direction if you should watch this one or not. If you guys like horrors and thrillers, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I do two new videos every single week, giving you recommendations of what to, and sometimes what not to watch. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you very soon. Stay spooky, bye.